Welcome everyone, Kostin here with a discussion about the future of Total War Warhammer 3, specifically the future of DLC according to Legend of Total War's leaks, as well as other information that Legend of Total War has about future Total Wars, and some of the things that he does have information on, but he didn't share in the video because he doesn't necessarily have the highest confidence in that information, but he has talked about it on his streams. Now, I just want to give you guys um, an idea of my experience with Legend of Total War on this particular subject. About half a year ago, I got in contact with a former developer from Creative Assembly, and I asked them a bunch of questions on the subject of CA, as well as a couple of other things. And specifically, I also asked about Rob Bartholomew, like, what do people think about him? Because well over half a year ago, we were getting all of that information surrounding uh, Rob Bartholomew from people like Bellular, people like Voland, all that, that a lot of people in the company hate him. Well, the person I talked to told me that they liked Rob Bartholomew, that they didn't necessarily know if Rob had been involved or not in a lot of the controversial decisions, quote unquote, but that their experience working with Rob had been a fairly pleasant one. Now, I contacted Legend. I was curious to know a couple of things from him, and I did ask him, what have you heard of Ron Bartholomew? And what Legend told me is that there's mixed opinions on him. Some people like working with him, other people do dislike him, from people within Creative Assembly. This, by the way, matched my information in the sense that the person I was talking with, at least from their perspective, they had liked working with Ron Bartholomew. So, to me, Legend just confirmed basically what I knew. And when you look at other sources, when it comes to leaks, obviously, there's always you always have to take it with a grain of salt because there might be multiple reasons behind leaks. It might be completely truthful, but even if it is completely truthful, things are subject to change, especially when we're talking about DLC. Like the next DLC is unlikely to come out until the end of August, September. A lot can change between now and then. The second DLC is unlikely to come out until like April, May next year. That would be my speculation. Just speculation, but we know how long Creative Assembly takes to do DLC. So like five, six months, maybe four months. We don't know how long they're going to take to build this DLC. We don't know how long they've been working on it. But suffice to say, that is, that is generally the timescale that Creative Assembly operates on. And in a year, or even in half a year, a lot of things can change and do change. Creative Assembly has changed the roadmap for Warhammer 3 several times already. And if you think that they're not going to change the roadmap, well, I got a mountain to sell you, so to speak. But on top of that, we also have the community reaction on these leaks. And specifically what Legend has talked about, what he has shared, the reception of it has been overwhelmingly negative at least on Reddit, for a couple of reasons. So here is what Legend shared, just broadly speaking. He did go into more details. I recommend you check his video. But basically, we're going to get a Cafean exclusive paid DLC. The Lords of Shang Yang, basically. So we're going to get an Ogre Cafean campaign. Then we're going to get a Tiger Man campaign for Cafean and associated with Shang Yang. How that's going to affect Xiao Ming's campaign, we don't know. And Maneater is going to be a quote-unquote free legendary lord for the ogres. Well, quote-unquote, because, according to legend, he's going to be available if you own the ogres already. So, I guess if you don't own the ogre DLC, you're not going to get access to Maneater. What this exactly means for Cafe in terms of reworks, what it means in terms of ogres for reworks, legend hasn't talked about it. I personally think this aspect is disappointing, because... When you have a free character, you're not going to have the same investment from Creative Assembly in improving that character. And Ogres do need significant improvements in terms of their roster and in terms of their campaign mechanics. Now, hopefully we do get improvements in their campaign mechanics. I would say that's more important than, you know, getting extra units. And it might be possible that some of the cafe and stuff that the Ogre Lord for cafe is going to get might trickle down for uh, the regular Ogres, but we don't know, right? But there's going to be legendary heroes, there's going to be uh, regular heroes, lords, units, etc. Then, the second DLC is going to be Dogs of War. 
So Manning Inter has been data mined. This is the reason I believe this uh, this leak, by the way. Uh, Manning Inter has been data mined. And Dogs of War have been data mined as well. So the second DLC is going to be Dogs of War. Which is going to include two Tylean uh, mercenary characters. So how exactly this is going to affect Belagar, Arnas, Ikekla, etc. We don't know. Maybe there will be some map expansion. I'm also really curious how they're going to do it for Realms of Chaos, if they're going to do it in any way, shape, or form. But we're going to get uh, two Tylean mercenary characters with a mercenary roster. They're going to have their own uh, racial-specific units, which seem based on the Empire. So you get halberdiers, you get cannons, you get all that. You do get... Um, uh, you, get you get hot pot catapults. <laughs> okay, halfling catapults. All right. But you're also going to be able to recruit units from other races as well. So I guess we have to wait and see how that is going to play out. And we're also going to get a free campaign for Slanish. If you were hoping for a Slanish rework, well, I guess the question about the Slanish rework is going to come down to what they're going to do for Ogres, assuming that Maneater is going to be a free character, and if they rework the Ogres. If they do rework the Ogres, and... Uh, if they do rework the ogres in a substantial way and add more stuff to them, even though it's going to be available for quote unquote free, then things might be looking up for Slanish. We're going to get the Kala for Slanish. I think that's the way you pronounce that name, not the Chala or something like that. I could be wrong on that. Correct me if I am. Okay. So, Slanish character with two mercenary characters, two paid legendary lords. We don't know what the price is. Legend doesn't know what the price is going to be. Well, I guess that's always subject to change, right? And then the third DLC, and this blew me away, like I was pretty shocked, the third DLC is going to be the Monkey King. So we're going to get Li, Li Dao, the Fire Dragon, is a free character for Cafe. And then we're going to get two Cafean lords that are basically variants of Cafe. So all the, deal, all the paid characters for Cafe are not going to play as Cafe currently plays right now. They're going to have their unique units, they're going to have their unique mechanics, all that, but they are going to be based on the structure of Cafe. Some people have speculated on the subject that Creative Assembly might have a contract with Games Workshop to deliver on this. We don't know, right? Just speculation from uh, from people. So Li, Li Diao as a free uh, DLC character, and then two monkeys as paid characters. You're telling me that the next three DLCs, one of them is going to be a, a group of mercenaries, human mercenaries, primarily. And then the other two are going to be cafe-exclusive DLCs, even variants as it is. Jeez, people complain about the Skaven in Warhammer 2 getting all of the good stuff. It feels to me like cafe is really going to get the good stuff. And I do have to wonder how much you know people speculate on the subject of oh, Creative Assembly has contract to Games Workshop, but also, how much is it that Creative Assembly decided to listen to all those people to, who are complaining, we want in the Koresh, right? We want the Tiger Man and all that. And that this is how CA is going to add like various unique units, especially, you know, Tiger Man, so, but various things from in the Koresh. They might also expand the map in this particular area, how much they expanded, that's a different discussion, but they might expand the map in these two areas and basically end in Koresh. Now, I don't expect End of Koresh to be made as race packs, but this is CA basically appealing to those people. How do I feel about this? Um, let me just say that I think this is a colossal mistake by Creative Assembly. Already, I was fairly skeptical of the idea of, oh, we already did a cafe and DLC with Yan Bo, one of the worst DLCs in the company's history, or the worst DLC when Shadow Change, let's add two more. When there's so many things else they can do. And if they were thinking, oh, we want to do this because people really want in Koresh, people like Great Book of Grudges want in the Koresh, people on Reddit, all that, but let me be blunt as possible about it, in the Koresh don't freaking matter. Like, let me be uh, frank about it. Like, if you're telling me people care about in the Koresh, let me tell you. People care about vampire counts. People care about Skaven. Keep, people care about greenskins. People care about X, Y, and Z, right? High elves, dark elves, you name it. The last damn thing that the community at large gives a shit about to come in priority overall, regardless of how vocal some people are, are freaking in the Koresh units. And while I understand that Cafe is really big in China, and this is probably the reason they're doing so, if indeed accurate, 
um, then then I still think it's gonna blow up in their face. Like they can get away with doing one cafe DLC if it's in the next one, but if they're doing back to back cafe with an interruption of Dogs of War. <laughs> And that's all we're going to get for a year and a half or something along those lines. Um, the community is going to be pretty pissed on that particular subject. So especially the Western European community, right? The West European, the North American community, they're going to be pretty pissed about that when there's so many other things we want. Um, like I understand Creative Assembly looking to do something that's popular, but just like and Dogs of War will be popular in Western Europe and North America, but... Geez, that's a lot of cafe. Like I was, like I'm not so negative. I don't really personally care what CA does. What I care about, like I'm not, like I would certainly like some races more than others. But my perspective on it, if you make a good DLC, and if a lot of people play it, I don't really give a damn what you're doing uh, with it. Like you can make a Daniel DLC, paid DLC, and that's all. As long as it does well, that's all I really care about personally. But other people, like the actual consumer base does care about many other things. So just pointing that aspect out. Now, let's talk about some things that Legend didn't mention in his video. Because what he didn't mention is quite important. Uh, but he didn't mention this in his live stream. So I asked him about like future plans in his live stream a couple of days ago. He said that he has heard about Nagash. And he did also state in his video that the Total War Center leak was accurate at least at one point. Like the Monkey King is coming. Maybe the timeline is a bit screwed over and it's bizarre to make a DLC when you're in a vulnerable state as a company about two new characters and no one cares about. Like, if the next DLC was Lady Owl versus Maneater versus um, Monkey King, I think that would do quite well, like, to be quite honest. But making it two new, completely new characters, that is a very, very questionable decision from my perspective on that subject. Because, like, yeah, people are not going to be happy about that. Like, plenty of people are just unhappy about, like, well, Cafe already got the DLC, so we're going to add another one. Just something worth pointing out on that subject. But what about the 100th Legendary Lord that Creative Assembly has outright stated they want to do something special for the 100th Legendary Lord? What about Nagash, who, according to Old or Center, including according to legend, according to other people, might be the last DLC. Well, the way I would take this, like the way I would take Legend's videos on the subject, it's not all that CA is doing. They're doing other things. Like Legend said, the World War One game is unlikely to happen or production's been halted. The Warhammer 40k game is happening. Star Wars is happening, but it's many years away from now, which does line up with what all the World Center has stated. And what other people have stated, like people like Rick Book of Grudges, other people with sources on Creative Assembly, etc., etc. What would be uh, my perspective on this? Well, on the 100th Legendary Lord aspect, it's not going to be Nagash. It was never going to be Nagash, because Nagash, based on all the information we have, is likely going to be the last DLC. So, what you should take away from Legend's video on this subject is, it, the way I view it, at least. Speculation on my part, to be sure, or my theory on it, but I believe that this indicates that Creative Assembly wants to do more DLC for Warhammer Free than they, they might have originally planned. Like, their plan is to release Nagash as the last character, but we've known for a while that Creative Assembly does have a limit on how much DLC they wanted to do. Like, remember, things have changed a lot in Creative Assembly over the last couple of months. And it's likely things have changed after the successful launch of Thrones of Decay. That's the information we have. Because you got to understand, Creative Assembly was planning at the end of 2023 to make a billion dollars with hyenas. That obviously failed. So that was a complete epic biblical disaster. Their plans changed. And I think like they wanted to see how people would react to Thrones of the Cake coming out before, uh, you know, charting the final course of action. And it does seem, based on information that's now provided, that Creative Assembly may have changed their plans and they're going to make more DLC for Warhammer Free. So for people that are doomsaying on Reddit, if you will, saying like, "Oh, we're not, we're only going to get these free DLCs," no. What I would personally view it as is more so like we're going to get these free DLCs and more stuff. Now, how much stuff we're going to get, I don't know. No one knows. 
all of it is in flux. But for the next year and a half or at least 10 months, this is what we're going to get. Like, I very much expect the next DLC to come out either late August or late September. The one after that, the second one, Dogs of War, to come out in spring next year. So, or late spring. So, April or March, similar, uh, April, March or May similar to Cast Orbs or similar to Thrones Decay. And then the one after that, a year from now, late September or late August, late September. That's probably the plan. What that third DLC is going to be, you know, maybe it's subject to change. Maybe because there's a lot of time between now and then. And if a lot of people in the community show Creative Assembly that, you know, we're not going to accept two cafe and DLCs or a free cafe and DLCs like that, they could very well change their plans. Remember this, Creative Assembly has changed their plans numerous times in their history for Warhammer 1, for Warhammer 2, for Warhammer 3. Don't doubt they, they can change their plans. Like, I would expect Dogs of War, I would expect the Lord of Shang Yang, or maybe they decide to release a Monkey King first. We don't know, really, what they're going to decide to do. I think it would be a better idea to release the Monkey King first versus, like, the Lords of Shang Yang. And yes, release Man Eater at the same time. Um... On top of that, beyond that uh, particular uh, aspect, what about the 100th Legendary Lord for the game? Where CA has stated numerous times, I want to do something special. We don't know. And I'm starting to believe, just because we don't know information, because a lot of the information we get from these leakers is about paid DLC. So I'm really starting to wonder this. Are we going to get a paid DLC for the 100th Legendary Lord, or are we going to get a free DLC? And that is what's on my mind on this. Possibly just a bit before Dogs of War. And what would that be? Like, what would that be uh, free DLC be? Because if you think it's going to be the Call Hour Dogs of War, like, that would be such a monumental failure for Creative Assembly to release that. Because, like, you can release a really special character and you get a lot of hype from the community if you do something special, CA. So, I believe that it's either going to be Tanquil or it's going to be Bugman. And I would possibly put a bit more money on uh, Joseph Bugman than on Tankwell. The reason behind this, if it's free, I would expect Bugman. Like, doors are fairly complete as a race. And data mining of files indicates that there have been some changes to Karakazorn made in those game files. So, you know, like, Joseph Bugman could very well be the 100th Ledger and Lord. When would he come out? Like, would he come out after the first Cafe and DLC or just before Dogs of War? We don't know. Like, could he be this year or next year? We don't know. What about Tanquil? Like, could he be the 100th Legendary Lord? Yeah. He could even be the free 100th uh, Legendary Lord. So, free DLC. Why would I say free? Why not make him paid? Well, most of the Skaven roster is already in the game. Like, the Skaven are fairly complete. There's only, like, one, two units, like, vermin lords, right? Like, you got the greater demons of the Skaven that they just need to add. But... CA has done free characters before where they've added one or two free units or something similar. Like, consider Leaf and R. He has his own unique campaign with one unique unit. So maybe that's what they do with Tankle. They just make a unique campaign to be sure with unique mechanics, but just one free unit. Like, Skaven absolutely don't need another paid DLC. That's just my perspective on that. I'm sure plenty of people disagree. Uh, obviously, it would be better if he was paid because they would put more effort, but they could just decide, okay, let's make it free. Let's get people hyped up. Let's get people playing the game. Um, we shall see, right? With Cafe stuff, it's worth remembering Cafe is one of the most popular races in Warhammer 3, the best race in Warhammer 3, like the baseline races, like something that doesn't require you to own DLC or Warhammer 1 or 2. The Cafe is certainly the best in that respect. So that's why Cafe makes sense. I would hope for something related to Tanquil, but we just don't know what the 100th Legendary Lord will be. Pe some people are even saying they won't do anything special for the 100th Lord. I personally believe that would be a missed opportunity, and I don't think the marketing team would be doing their I think the marketing team would not be doing their jobs if they didn't seize that opportunity. Because you got to remember, some of the, because quite a lot of the decisions CA makes is because they're going to be popular, right, and build up hype. And they certainly are in the situation where they want to build up goodwill with the community. So I would put a lot of money down on the 100th Legendary Lord actually coming out and not being related to either the, cafe, the first Cafe DLC or Dogs of War. But that's just my speculation on the subject. Let me know what you guys uh, think about all of this. And 
we don't know when we're going to get 40K. We don't know when we're going to get Star Wars. Like, 4K might be likely is going to be next year at the very least, maybe late next year. We shall see. Maybe even 2026, early 2026. We don't know. But apparently, it's going according to plan at the moment. Christine, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications. Stay tuned for more.